and welcome back to the Reaper. So we're in my beloved new uh, Mirage and we're going to look at HUD modes. So most planes have a different HUD modes based on what you intend on doing. So you could have a HUD mode for navigation, a HUD mode for landing, a HUD mode for weapons and whatever. All the planes are slightly different. So we're going to just start with the uh, essential, what I'd call the default nav mode. This master arm switch here is off because it's pointing down and we have just the basic uh, nav mode in play. So let's have a look what we've got. We've got a line, a long line, which is a horizon line. It's the zero line for your uh, ladder. There's the zero, yep, okay, it's just, it looks a bit weird, that's all. Yep, right, then we've got our ladder. So we've got an um, increment of uh, five degrees pitch. So this is five degrees plus, this is minus five degrees, this is plus 10 degrees. And you can see I can pitch all the way up like so. Anyone got anything to add to the um, pitch ladder? The thing about the pitch ladder to note is that um, unlike the Hornet, it doesn't angle when you go further up or down. Just the same principle applies of, I think it's every 10 degrees or so is numbered and the upwards one are solid lines, the downward ones are dashed lines. If, um, so if you're in cloud or whatever, you can tell which way is up and down, basically. Roger that. If, um, mm -hmm. Obviously, if I, if I roll the plane like that, you can see they obviously stay level. Super. Um, right, next at the top we have the compass band. What do you call it, Sherman? The heading tape. Heading tape. Compass band, heading tape. That's what it is. Obviously, that shows your um, heading direction. So that's 270. And it is worth noting that the Mirage can cycle between uh, magnetic and true heading. So if you do that, then it will cycle to that on the heading tape. I firm, understood. Okay, so obviously, and then I've turned to 310 there. Okay, and obviously it's a 360, it's 360 uh, around you, and zero is pointed north. Okay, now we're going to look left. We've got a speed there. Now, does anyone know in nav mode if that's true or indicated? I'm guessing it's indicated. So we believe that is calibrated airspeed. And a MAC meter, and a MAC, uh, yeah, a MAC reading below. Okay, that's fine. If you want to change your nav mode uh, from magnetic to uh, non-magnetic, uh, mm -hmm. next to your radar screen, on the right-hand side you've got your HSI, mm -hmm. and if you just turn the knob, mm -hmm. you'll see a little cut icon, change for, um, from nav to CV nav. On the right, Roger. Roger, yes, yeah, so this changes uh, from, uh, what is it, magnetic to... Navigation mode to magnetic nav uh, ma navigation mode, and then you can also change uh, to TACAN and to your other sort of standard navigation mode. A firm, cool. Uh, which is the standard basic nav? Default? Basic nav, yeah. Roger, very good. Right next to the right of our heading tape is our altimeter, uh, barometric presumably and in in feet but we can change that to radar in fact we've got several options we slip down here in the hard control first of all we can turn our radar altimeter on from a to m and then this said b is barometric h if we go down here is radar so we get an extra option here that there is our radar altimeter uh, radar altitude now we're at twenty thousand feet the radar altimeter only works low down i'm not sure what the threshold usually five thousand feet or something like that um, so it just displays as uh, nothing at the moment, but that would show our radar altimeter altitude. And we've also got a third option here, uh, Z uh, S E L H, and that shows the minimum, the warning basically, the minimum um, uh, altitude, radar altitude for a, a warning to go off. And you can adjust it with the knob here, so 220 feet or 300 feet or whatever. And you go below that radar altitude, and it will give a warning off. Right, let me turn all that off. Right, uh, quickly back to the heading tape. You see you've got a line here and a, a triangle. And if I turn, especially sharply, you see that there's always a kind of delay. The triangle is always following the line. That's because the line shows where the aircraft is pointing and the triangle where shows where the aircraft is actually moving. And due to uh, things like angle of attack, uh, the actual um, travel of the aircraft will always slightly trail where the aircraft is pointing. So that's what that is. We've got the kind of universal flight path marker here. So that means, again, actually where the aircraft is flying. Um, and now to the sides of the path marker, you've got these kind of chevrons left and right. Would you like to have a shot at those, Sherman? Those are acceleration. They basically represent acceleration or deceleration of the aircraft. They are positioned relative to the flight path marker 
and if they are above the flight mar path marker, it represents the aircraft accelerating. If they are below, it represents that the aircraft is currently decelerating. Roger. These are extremely useful when you're trying to get on speed for refueling, formation flying, or landing. Roger, so if I go burners on, you can see they, they go up because I'm accelerating, engines off, and they go down because I'm deaccelerating, so that's that. Right, on to the waypoint information. So we have our waypoint, so current selected waypoint information here, so that's waypoint 1. We're not sure what the N means. Uh, and 90 there, that is the amount of miles from us to the waypoint. And here is the waypoint house. So if it's left of the flight path marker, then we need to go left to go and find it. And um, up or down, Sherman, can you take that? Uh, it does not represent up or down. All that house is attempting to do is get you to turn towards the heading of the waypoint. Once it's done that, you'll actually notice that it seems to hook onto the flight map marker once you're heading towards it. Okay. So, if it's pointing forwards or upwards, then your target is in front of your 90 degree arc. So, basically, from your left to right, it's in front of you. If it's pointing downwards, uh, it's behind your left and right wings. Hey firm, yeah, I just turned 180 and indeed it did turn down. Lovely. Right. So you actually fly close enough to the waypoint, you look down at where your waypoint is supposed to be on the terrain and sometimes you will actually see it. Roger, excellent. Okay. Right, let's go to our next mode, which is approach mode. Now we do have other modes here, TOP, POL, RD and OBL. They're either of no interest to us at the moment or and or not functioning at the moment in the Mirage. So we're going to ignore them. Go straight to approach. Uh, so approach is what we're going to be uh, going to use if we're going in for landing. Now things that I've noticed are that the heading tape has moved down to the middle of the HUD. So it's no longer at the top. So it's moved down to the horizon line. Do we know reason or it, that's just how it is? Yeah, well, the reason is obviously because you are trying to... Uh get visibility on the runway so your eyes want to be down towards where you're looking at the horizon to try and have for landing so having the heading tape down there is more convenient roger very good design good old french planes also i noticed below the mac meter we've now got an angle of attack or alpha meter because obviously it's very important yes. alpha for the landing uh, and we've also got some square brackets that have been added in. Would you like to have a poke at those? Uh, those represent the ideal angle of attack for landing. The intention is to get both the flight path marker, the acceleration indicators, directly in line with the square brackets. Roger, I don't think I can do it here as an example, but you basically want to get these lines here, flight path marker, within those brackets and that will set you up perfectly for landing i also noticed yes. on the horizon line there's also an uptick now which i think um is basically the same as my as my heading line by the looks of it yes yes it is your heading line roger very good anything else you want to add to approach mode chaps you can talk about the virtual runway if you like yeah, so there is an ILS connected virtual runway, which, however, I don't think this airfield, or actually, as far as I'm aware, the build ILS doesn't have for functioning in this build at the moment. So even if we could show you, um, well, even if we set it up, we couldn't show you because currently the ILS just doesn't respond like we don't get a signal. Roger, but if it did, then I believe we could have a virtual runway painted on our HUD, which would help us in um, bad weather conditions. Yes, that is what happens. However, I would also note that um, the virtual runway tends to be a few feet above the actual runway. It doesn't cause a major problem, just don't panic when you fall through the virtual runway. Okay, anything to add to approach before we turn our master arm on? I do notice something here as I'm coming in on final. It looks like if you're on the final heading for a setup waypoint, it will also give you a caution warning if you eat you're coming in for the final approach. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is turn my master arm on. Ping! Uh, right, so, here down here are our weapons. We've got a magic, we've got a super, we've got uh, slick 82s and a beluga. Now, it's my understanding when I select these weapons here with these buttons down here that we're going to get some different symbology. We're not going to go too deep into it. First of all, uh, without selecting a weapon, just in master arm mode on, uh, let's talk about what's different. Um, stand by. Right, so to tell you what's different directly off the bat in cannon mode with just master arm on, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, heading in your waypoint information disappears. On the left it shows you the selected weapon, which will be cannon, because we don't have the cannon arm selected. 
cannon button will be flashing. Okay. You'll see a G indicator, an uh, AOA indicator, and then at the bottom you'll have two circuits of numbers. They should read 125 right now. What does that mean? That represents uh, your guns and the number of ammunition in each gun. Oh, I've got two guns, right. I, I was unaware of that. Okay. Yes, the, you have two cannons lying under the nose. Roger, now we don't want to go into huge detail about the weapons, but I do notice a gun snake. We have a very quick overview of that. A gun snake is essentially, yeah, it is calculated based on your own aircraft and it attempts to formulate a pattern of flight with the intent that the target will be between the two. Uh, uh, horizontal lines you see there. Lovely job, very good. Okay, we'll go. We'll do a proper guns movie, and we'll go through that in more detail. But good. Right, next we're going to click on the magic and see if we get anything interesting. It's obviously changed. It says Maverick now, and it's not flashing, so it's good to fire. I've got a magic. G and a G and a D at the bottom. What does that mean? Right. So G and D are the French words mm. for left and right. Typically, if you have one locked up, the selected missile will have a circle around it. The Mirage will uh, try and realistically decide which is the best missile to use based on the aspect of the enemy craft in front of you for both the 530 and the Magics. Awesome. Roger, makes sense. Apart from that, it looks the same. Anything else that I've missed, do you think? You'll notice that there's now a seek ahead cross above the flight path marker and below the heading tape. Hey, firm. That represents the forward-facing uh, caged seeker head of the Mirage and of the Magic Missile. And typically, you will only um, lock it on via either this mode or by uh, uncaging it onto the radar. Uh, just one tiny thing to add is this kind of stretched H here after the weapon. That shows the type of radar scan that uh, we're using. We're going to go into more detail on the actual uh, the radar and the weapons video. So. Lovely. Right, let's move on to the Super. I'm on the Super now. It's got the same G and D. It's got the 530. Uh, it doesn't, interestingly, it doesn't have a scan, the scan H this time. Otherwise, I don't see anything interesting. Anything to add? So, another interesting thing you'll note about the 530 is that the speed and mark number are still up on the top left and right, whereas the Magic wasn't. Other than that, uh, everything else is near the same, and to see more symbology, you'll need to lock me up. Oh yeah, no. The, oh yeah, I see. As to the magic, it moves it down. If you look into the kind of middle of the heart for the Super 530, it moves it up to the top. How weird that is! Okay, well I'm sure there's reason behind it because yes. So in order to see any more s uh, symbology for the Super specifically, you'll need to lock me up. Roger. And we are far to yourself. Yeah, that will come later on. Right. Next, we're going to go to our Mark 82. So Pion got our radar turned on. Um, and very quickly, all I see is two extra things. Uh, obviously, we've got the BL uh, for, for the bomb sign on the left. We've got like a weird diamond thing with a dot in it. Is that something to do with the CCRP, I'm guessing? Yes, that is the radar designator. Basically, that it designates the impact point for the CCRP mode. And you'll also notice on the right side, your waypoint information is now replaced by the designator range. So That's wherever right. you point the designator, its range in kilometers will be displayed for you. A firm, good. All right, we'll go through that properly on the bombing beat. And finally, our beloved BF-6 or BFG, I don't know, is the Beluga. Uh, it's right. the Beluga, which is a runway bomb. Now this, uh, this is a CCIP style bomb. So you have some very similar symbology from the flight path marker. You have a bomb fall line as well as a pull up queue. Roger. That's fine. Right, and we'll go through that in the video. Right, uh, in the uh, CCIP video. Anything to add to the hard modes before we uh, disappear, chaps? Um, aside from the some of the modes still being unavailable, not much else to say. Lovely job. Right, and we hope that helps, and we'll see you later.